right, welcome to the next part of our tutorial. In this session, we'll be talking about the automatic monitoring services of Svannet, commonly known as Svannet Projects. So this is now the paid module of Svannet. As you can see now, we are in the station list. So if you watch the previous videos, you will know that the station list is the list where all of the stations that are assigned to your account will be visible. Uh, and this is the free module. Now, if you want to go to the automatic monitoring services where things really start to get exciting at Svannet, you have to go to the project list right here. Now, in the new Svannet, we have incorporated a feature that is very good for people that have a lot of stations. And this is the icon right here showing whether the station is assigned into a project or not. If you click on that, it will show you that this is part of a project. And if you click here, that will take you directly to that project page. Now for users that are not using the paid automatic monitoring service module, this page will not even be visible. So if you can't see this icon on your Svannet, that most likely means that your account has not been set to a premium account. If you're paying for the Svannet automatic monitoring services and you can't see it, contact your distributor or Svantec support and we will sort you out. As this module is quite extensive, we will split this tutorial video up in two parts. In this part, I will just briefly go through the different functions of the automatic monitoring services without going into deep on how to set them up, what they do, how to configure them. And in the next video, I'm going to show you the new automatic monitoring services templates, how to configure your project view in such, such a way that you get the most out of uh, Svannet. The question you might ask is what is going to happen to those established users that are already using the uh, Svannet automatic monitoring services? Well, wonder no more. If you're already an established user, your old Svannet project opened in the new Svannet um, will be converted into the new Svannet view. Now, let me t show you what I mean. So. Whenever you go into the automatic monitoring services, you will most likely start with going into the view. The view shows you the uh, layout of your project. Now, this is the new view and I will go into the details of how to set it up, what the new things that you can add and change are in the next video. What I want to show you is the difference between the old Svannet projects and the new Svannet automatic monitoring services. In this view, we're looking at the exact same project, but in the old Svannet. So if you hit view here, you will see the same old project list that you have grown accustomed to. Uh, you have the map view that shows you the last hour of the recording. You have the time history that will always show the LC peak, LAQ and LF max of that station. The event view, result charts and more. You have your project information right here and uh, all of these things. Well, in the new Svannet, you have the exact same thing converted into the automatic monitoring services. And what do I mean by that? Well, up here you have your information. You have your map, you have your last hour chart, you have your chart with, with the last month data. So basically the equivalent of the time history chart that you've grown used to. And of course the event view here. Now. In the second video, where we're going to deep dive into the different things of the new automatic monitoring services, I'm going to go step by step of what the differences is, how to change them, what you can do, etc, etc. Now, in this video, I just want to show you for the new users what the rest of the automatic monitoring services bring to the table. Now, remember, in this view right here, all the data that we see is data that is currently stored on the Spannet cloud. This means that your station is uploading the data that it's gathering, the noise data, vibration data, dust data, material data. It's uploading that straight to our cloud and therefore it is visualized here in different type of charts, tables and heat maps. Now, in order for that to work, you need to set it up. So the most important setting on the automatic monitoring services is hidden out under the automatic download tab. Let's go in here. 
The automatic mo uh, download tab requires you to have the setting on. By default, when you create this project, the setting is off. This means that no data is being transferred from the station into the project. Therefore, you need to have it on. The download period specifies how often data is going to be transferred into the project. You can also specify what kind of data you want to be uploading to the cloud. Perhaps you do not want to uh, upload the wave data, so the raw files, the audio files. You want to only have the logger data or you want to have all the different files. The very cool thing that you can do here is to select a file upload destination, basically an FTP server. If you have one, an FTP or SFTP server, we have a very good and user-friendly interface for that where you can test the connection, whether that works or not. So you can click here that, te that will test the connection. If you're successful, you will know that, that you can actually be streaming up the files into the FTP server. In a situation like this, the SpawnNet becomes sort of like a bridge. You download data from your station up to SpawnNet Cloud and SpawnNet Cloud uploads the data up to the FTP server. You can specify automatic download alarms. So if the alarms in station are not sufficient for you, you can have very uh, advanced alarms here. You can actually also specify multi-point alarms. So if you have more than one station in a project at the automatic monitoring services, you can then create an alarm that is only valid when all of the three or four or five stations have reached a certain threshold. This is a very cool feature if you're doing uh, vibration monitoring. Scheduled memory clearing is a very important parameter, especially if you're working with a 258. This uh, setting here means that SpanNet will force the station to delete all the files that have been uploaded to SpanNet. For, uh, for example, in this um, setting, every day at 11 o'clock, we will be uh, deleting all CSV files that have been uploaded to SpanNet. And remember that it only deletes the files that have been uploaded to SpanNet, not all of the files that are on the station. So the automatic download is the key setting bar here at automatic monitoring services. If you do not turn this on, there will be no data in your project. That is key here. Now, in order to go through in a fast manner, I like to go through these tabs real quick. Data files is pretty self-explanatory. You see all the different files that have been uploaded to your project and you can filter and sort on a different dates on different type of project. The sharing option is a very neat one. Here you can actually get a link um, as a token. Uh, so if you want to share this project with somebody, uh, for example, you are measuring residential noise and you are in charge of that project, but you're the residents in the area where you're monitoring the noise wants to be able to sh check the project, check the project data, check what kind of levels are being gathered. You can actually generate a visitor token and they can, without having to log in or register to SpanNet, get into that project, check some basic data and more. Uh, and also you can do a second thing and that is to add users into the project. You can set their ranks between guest to administrator, manager. You can manage share access, meaning that you will set up what the different uh, different ranks mean what the different ranks can do and actually this is a great tool if you have a company where there are five engineers and all of the engineers want to have access to the stations all of the engineers want to have access to the project this is a great way of doing that you will add them to the project you will set them to administrator and through that they will be able to access all of the same things that you can do as the owner in the configuration tab, you can set the project parameters such as the name, location, description. You can define the station settings. This is the station settings in the project, but you can also click here and that will take you to the settings of the station. So that will be sort of our gateway to uh, SpanNet uh, station list again. So that can be done. 
uh, and furthermore status pretty self-explanatory as well you can see the status sort of like a dashboard of all the stations in this case we only have one station you can click here to see if the, there is an upload in progress if the station is online memory status power source battery state alerts and you can click here which is a manual memory clearing switch which will basically automate uh, it will manually trigger what we usually had here so with this clearing setting meaning that it will uh, uh, remove all of the data so that was a very quick and uh, fast tutorial of, of uh, the automatic monitoring services in the next video i will be going through in detail uh, on how to set up your viewing page here a lot of different updates have been done here this is now a very open way of generating either reports creating a dashboard that fits exactly your organization needs so this will be a great tutorial so stay tuned for that if you're interested because there is there are a lot of uh, tools that i want to show you that we have added with this new uh, spanet automatic monitoring services so thank you for watching and see you next time